Good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the run-up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Good morning everyone and it's nice to have you with us this morning. My name is Bayo Uluwake. Today we will be revisiting the security advisory of the United States and the response of the federal government. We will also look at budgets the states are presenting, starting with Cross River State, which called its own budget, quote, the budget of quantum infinitum, unquote. We will also be talking to, uh, the, we'll be talking to the Cross River State Special Advisor on Budget, Mr. Otuo Tuita, and a security expert, Augustin Ega. Quantum infinitum. Cross River State is, being, is noted uh, for giving uh, budgets names that are on head of. Kabbalistic <laughs> was one of them. Uh, in short, anyway, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's just go straight. But the infinitum presupposes that uh -huh. it's not going to end. So okay. maybe it's not only a budget for 2023. But anyway, we'll get clarification but, but, uh, why, from why, our guests. Why would we not even just take an English word? Like, you know, the budget of continuity or something, yeah. you know, but it had to be quantum infinitum. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I'm sure our guests will throw more light <laughs> on All this. All right. Okay. Uh, we're glad to be joined by the Cross River State uh, Special Advisor uh, on Budget, uh, Mr. Otu Otuita. But um, before we have him talking, we'll take a very short break. And when we return, we just start talking with Mr. Oita. You're welcome back. We just had to take a short break. But now we're being joined by Mr. Otu Otuita, the Special Advisor on Budget to Cross River State Government. Uh, good morning and welcome to the run-up, Mr. Oita. All right. Uh, good morning. Okay. Uh, the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, on Thursday presented a 330 billion naira appropriation bill of 2023 to the State House of Assembly. It, he christened the budget of quantum infinitum. <laughs> As usual, another very big name. And according to him, 130 billion naira would be for recurrent expenditure, while 200 billion naira would be for capital expenditure. So just walk us through the provisions of that bill and why they took whatever took which place did so. All right, thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I want to thank you for having uh, me on your program. Uh, the budget that was passed by His Excellency, uh, the Governor of Cross River State, uh, Professor Ben Ayade, CON, is a citizen's budget, is the budget for the people. Uh, in the wisdom of uh, the government of Professor Ben Ayade, we're looking at uh, without uh, the people, we can't have the government. So in Going forward from 2023, the government is interested in ensuring that uh, we make a sufficient provision to take our people uh, out of the poverty line. So basically, that is the main focus of uh, the 2023 budget. And we're also looking at okay, making provisions for a wet and dry commissioning of uh, the, the projects that have been built under the leadership of Professor Ben Ayade in the early part of the uh, uh, 20. 2023 before he hands over uh, power to his successor. So basically, the budget, as you've said, uh, we have a recurrent expenditure of uh, 130 billion that represents uh, 39 uh, percent of the total budget size, and we have a, a, a capital, a proposed capital expenditure of uh, 61 uh, percent that represents the total uh, that represents the. the Total budget size of uh, 200 billion naira. Okay, well, 130 billion naira for recurrent, and uh, there's been complaints that 200. Uh, 200 is for capital, 130 sure. is for recurrent. Sure. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, for recurrent, okay. uh, there are some complaints that uh, some people have not been receiving their pensions or salaries or or whatever, and 130 billion, will that be sufficient? Because after this year he's leaving, will he leave a legacy of uh, the kind of governor that uh, was owing before he left office, or that money is sufficient to defray all the debts that uh, the government is owing before leaving office? Well, I, I don't think uh, your statement is, is correct, it's true. Uh, because I know that uh, the Cross River State government is paying uh, Salaries and the Cross River State Government is also paying uh, 
a pension. And I don't think that the governor of Kosovo State has defaulted in the payment of the salaries and pension since he assumed duty. As for gratuity, just recently the governor had made a, a, a provision uh, uh, of about, I think, 1 billion naira, which was captured in a capital, uh, in a social benefits provision in the 2022 budget to see how we can uh, settle uh, issues that are related to gratuity. And I know it's, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Uh, well, I don't know if um, if our information was wrong because uh, we know a few a few months back or a few years back we saw that uh, even some uh, court judges were protesting at the gate of the government house. We also have some pensioners that have been complaining. Is it that some of these ones just have peculiar problems that are making them not receive their pensions or is a general thing? Because they make us believe that is a general thing that pensioners are suffering in Cross River State. And so we're just wondering, we're not saying that he should have paid, he should have paid, but we're saying that he's leaving by next year. If he could not pay uh, all this while, will this 130 billion be enough to cover what should make him free strong? Okay, first, let, let me state very clearly that in Cross River State, our uh, payroll system is automated. Okay. So what that means is that uh, the moment you are accepting service, either by length of service or by year of, uh, or by, uh, by uh, age, it, it uh, you're is, automatically uh, transmuted to the pension uh, scheme. So because of that, there's absolutely no way in Crush River State will be owing pension. So that is not correct. Okay. And they're talking about the judges. I think the issue with the uh, with 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 uh, the magistrate that were employed is that I think uh, the uh, recruitment process uh, did not uh, follow through uh, the correct processes. I think that was the main challenge with, with it. Uh, although I just joined the government in 2021, so I don't have the depth uh, details about uh, what happened with the judge. But I know that uh, when I spoke up, uh, uh, when I discussed these issues with my predecessor, I said. Uh, the recruitment process that brought those judges, those, those magistrates in was, was faulty. So government was actually interested in correcting all of that first uh, before uh, uh, rationalizing them into the payroll system. Okay, uh, well, some, yeah. some people also have concerns that mm -hmm. um, some of the projects in Cross River State are either not completed mm -hmm. or are not even working, those that are completed. Uh, we've heard projects like the uh, spaghetti flyover, the um, uh, the super highway. We've heard Kalachika. We've heard uh, uh, a lot of things. The uh, toothpick factory and all that. Most of these ones, whether they are complete or not, some of them are not complete. Some are complete, but they are not working at all. So it do doesn't translate to any money making venture for the state and all that. Are we sure that this 200 billion that is earmarked for um, capital. capital expenditure yeah. will cater to those needs and make these things work optimally before the present administration leaves? All right, thank you very much, sir. I think uh, it's also important that I establish that the, the essence of governance is to provide uh, good leadership to the people and. Uh, when uh, you say probably you don't live in Cross River State, uh, that the uh, the many projects of his excellencies are not working, that is not correct. Uh, I want to start with uh, you mentioned the spaghetti flyover. Mm. That's just an interchange, and if you're in Cross River, you see that work is actually advancing to completion. Uh, and then you mentioned the garment factory, the nodules. The garment factory is working. That I, I, I can confirm. The Kalachika way will process the bait for, for sale is also working. The, the noodles factory is waiting for certification from NAVDAC. And I, I, I think the, okay, the toothpick factory is the only factory I know that at the moment is not working because of the uh, raw materials. What of the rice raw meal in Ogoja? Yes, the rice meal in Ogoja is working, at, it's been concession. Uh, uh, it's been concession to someone that is bringing to that's willing to to put in so much money. The issue with the right meal right now is that we don't have enough right paddy. 
That is just the problem with, with the rice mill. And that's why government in the 2023 uh, budget has made sufficient pro provision for grant to see how we can encourage people to go into uh, rice farming. Uh, the only issue with the Ogoja rice mill is that we don't have enough rice paddy uh, to, 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 to serve the, the industry. That is the problem we have with the rice mill. But if it's about the place working, the place is working perfectly. Perfectly. Okay. Interesting. Um, thanks for your perspectives, Mr. Otuita. Um, Cross River State is one of the few states in the oil producing areas that's been able to make a bold effort to diversify its economy and not be entirely dependent on crude oil. It's one of the very, very few states. And, and commendation actually uh, should go to Cross River State for that. I think right from the time of uh, Governor Donald Duke, we've seen efforts to actually diversify, especially to build up the tourism uh, potentials and the agricultural potentials of the state. And so, so there are a lot of people who, who feel Cross River State should be commended for that. If we look at the budget which your administration is proposing, and given the financial difficulties uh, affecting the country because of our dependence largely on crude oil uh, for, foreign exchange, uh, for our foreign exchange earning, don't you think that there could be a risk that the state government might not be able to fund this budget directly? Or, or do, you, do you think differently? Okay, uh, yes, uh, the, the issue you raised is very, very valid. It's very, very valid. But I, I know that uh, under uh, Professor Ben, uh, they will be doing a lot of creative, creative funding. Uh, creative funding. And what this means is that in Cross River State, we ensure that our processes are very correct uh, to attract the donor uh, support. So uh, when we were looking at our FAC allocation, uh, I think we receive about the, the least allocation in this country. And uh, for us, since we were conscious of the fact that our allocation is small, what we do is that we try as much as possible to strengthen our public finance management uh, uh, processes. So that uh, multilateral organizations like the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the International Monetary Fund, when they look at what we are doing, they appreciate what we are doing, and they come in to support our activities, our expenditure activities in Cross River State by ways of the budget support. So we're looking at uh, improving on our public finances uh, management and just to ensure that uh, we make a Cross River State very further for multilateral and donor agencies to come in and support a program. But if you are talking about the actual inflow, our actual uh, inflow is actually uh, grossly inadequate to, to fund our proposed 2023 budget. But we believe in our real power to, to do the right thing to attract additional funding by ways of budget support. And we're also hoping that the federal government, who, that is very, very aware of the situation in Cross River State, will also come in to give us some special intervention fund that will help us to, to, to fund our 2023 budget. Whenever you talk about um, donor agencies, um, people to come in and donate, apart from the federal government that you have said may need to come in for special intervention, uh, people get to uh, wonder what the terms will be for any donor to come in, especially now that uh, Nigeria is getting into so much debt. Whenever you say we are thinking about funding coming from external sources, people fear. Would you have more insight or throw more light to these donations that you're thinking will come from foreign bodies? What are the terms if these people come to donate or invest in Cross River State? Okay, basically this funding comes uh, uh, in ways, uh, by ways of grants. Mm. All, all multilateral and donor agency expects you to, states of national government to do is get your processes right, be transparent, uh, be open. And the moment you're open, uh, they will definitely come in and assist. Like, I don't know if you're aware of the CPAS program of the World Bank. Mm. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, I don't know if you're, you've heard of the CPAS program of the World Bank. Yeah. 
Yes. And then we, we have a, yes, we, then we, right now, as we're speaking, uh, there is one other program that has also been rolled out by the World Bank. Uh, I think it's in the area of the ease of doing business. And all the World Bank is saying is that, okay, they put up some eligibility criteria. And once you meet these eligibility criteria, mm -hmm. they'll just bring the money. So it's grant. All you need to do is just get the processes right, transparently open, and then you end this grant. Okay. Uh, well, so, I, I, I was just, uh, just Mr. Twitter, I was just, I was just curious. Um, Maybe briefly, okay. if you could, if you could give us an idea of what percentage of this budget can be funded directly from internally generated uh, mm -hmm. revenue, and then the percentage, you know, which of course we know you you get thirteen percent derivation, and you get the normal no, allocation. No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. We don't get thirteen percent derivation. No, cross trust does not benefit from. Uh, not anymore since the sitting of Bakasi. Ah, right? okay, okay, yes. okay, fine. So that thanks for clarifying. So, so just go ahead and then. So, what, what exactly? How, what is the percentage you're likely to generate yourself, and what percentage are you expecting multilateral bodies uh, and donor agencies to to, to support you with? Uh, all right, uh, but, uh, our projections for 2022 is that we expect uh, 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 internal revenue. Uh, service, the state internal revenue service to to mop at least a, a two billion naira minimum monthly, and we we're looking at uh, the state internal revenue uh, uh, turning in like about a 24 uh, billion naira, and then we're also looking at fact that uh, we expect that uh, uh, from from the federation account we should also earn at least a minimum of about a three three billion naira uh, monthly, and that will show up. Uh, uh, expected revenue in 2023 to about uh, 80 to uh, 90 uh, billion around the average. Mm -hmm. And then the other sources is capital receipts. Uh, we're okay. also looking at uh, any capital receipts from uh, multilateral organizations. Some of these receipts are very, very statutory. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me, let me die. Well, I don't know if it's, this, this is digression, but... Um, Okay. There, there's a scheme going on in Cross River State now. A lot of people, I don't know if that's the official name, but a lot of people call it the food on the table scheme, um, where people from, from every part of the state are, you know, from time to time selected to be given some stipends. Uh, the last one I saw they, was uh, uh, 30000 for every individual, lots and lots of them. Um, I'd like you, first of all, to confirm that something like that is going on. And if it is, um, where is the funding for these coming from? Where individuals of Cross River, it's a laudable thing that people are being given this, but how is the funding uh, being sourced to make sure this scheme continues or it works the way the government wants it to work? If we don't have our people alive, we won't have the government. <laughs> so for Professor Ben Ayade, we're interested in sharing the little we have. So whatever revenue that comes into the state, whether it's internally generated or it's from the federation account, mm. we we'll look at the people who are in need and we provide for them. Yeah. So all we were doing is that we will, we will see how we can distribute our income to ensure that it reach every household in Cross River State. It is not because we have so much. It is because of the real power of the government to ensure that every home, that no child, no adult across River State, go sleep hungry. So that's what that the program is all about. And I think uh, a lot of other states are also keying into what the, go the government of Cross River State is doing by all also uh, uh, taking part in this uh, food on the table initiative. But basically, for us, it's about providing food to our people. Not only to, 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 to indigenous of Cross River State, but to, any, to everybody that lives in Cross River State. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Otuita, um, your state did something really revolutionary in terms of um, boosting tourism when it managed to get the carnival uh, onto a global tourism agenda. Uh, and I know that in December of every year, before COVID, uh, it was one of the uh, tourism events that were often looked to, for, you know, people often looked forward to 
to becoming a part of that. But I don't know how well, we know COVID was, was a big problem for, for every country and particularly for tourism. Uh, but I don't know if, I don't know the extent to which COVID affected this carnival uh, and whether the carnival had gotten to a stage where it was beginning to yield some revenue for the Cross River State Government. Would you like to comment on that? All right, I think, uh, I think the, the Commissioner for Tourism would have been the most appropriate person to, to comment on this issue. But be, be it as it is, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the carnival, as you all know, is actually a, a global uh, a festival. And uh, COVID came, just as you've said, and uh, there was a slowdown. But this year, we we're, were going to make it bigger. For us, it's just about giving life to our people, making our people happy. Uh, and so not, we'll, we'll proceed with the carnival this year. And I'm very sure with small businesses and big businesses, hotels, and the small woman trader in the market who also benefit directly from the carnival. Mm. Okay, uh, Mr. Ita, uh, at this point, I would like to say thank you to you for clarifying some issues. Whatever issue arises anymore after today, we are sure to come back to Cross River State and get some clarification. But for now, what you have said has really educated us. Thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Oh, all right, thank you very much. Can I make a few remarks? Please, do. All, 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 all right, it's important that I use this opportunity to say that uh, uh, the Cross River State Government uh, budget is published online and the budget implementation report uh, is also published online. That uh, for every uh, revenue that comes to Cross River State, it is properly reported. So you can access this information on our state in internal revenue service website. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, We've been talking with Mr. Otto Twitter, uh, the SA budget uh, in, of Cross River State. And one thing that just struck me that I, I want us to just um, look at is the fact that if you go to Cross River State, they have one of the youngest breed of political appointees in Cross River State. Like okay. Mr. Ita, yeah. if he's up to 30, he's not far from 30. Maybe mm -hmm. he's 35 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And there's so many like that. Then you talk about uh, other uh, PAs and uh, the people that used to be mature, more mature, more yeah. elderly than they are. I think for that, if not for anything, Governor Ayade will be remembered. No, definitely, uh, definitely. And I am one of those who I have been conversing, and my friends know that, I keep conversing, that we must give responsibility mm. to young people. Uh, I mean, on the program the other day, we noted that we are 206 million, and at least 150 million Nigerians are below the age of 30. Yeah. So it's important to have young people. It's their country now. The country belongs to them. A significant part of the population, the decision making, uh, has to reflect their aspirations. And I think, like you have said, I align myself entirely with your with your sentiment that Governor Ayade deserves to be commended. Mm. You know, for giving young people great responsibilities in his administration. And I hope whoever is taking over from him next yeah. year will continue and even do better in this regard. Yeah, because uh, all these young people, they may stumble now because they are- We all stumble. Yeah, they are new <laughs> to the system, but none of them will go back to how they were. And in terms of political involvement, in yes. terms of uh, nation building, in terms of aspirations and all that, they have seen that they too can grow beyond being the, the back carriers to becoming something significant. And his appointments, yeah, well, sometimes it was worrisome <laughs> that yeah. he had thousands and thousands of them. But now we're seeing that, okay, this could be a foundation to a lot of, uh, to the growth of Cross River State in the near future because mm -hmm. people get aware very early mm -hmm. enough to, to, to be able to take up responsibility when the time is ripe. Well, maybe True. we will not remember him for a lot of things, but for that, I think we'll remember <laughs> him. Great. <laughs>